Yo, what is up everybody? Welcome, welcome to this week, episode five of the Slot One Super Podcast. Uh, I am taking over the main role today in doing the intro and all that good stuff. It's your boy, The Mask Ningen. Obviously, you can see on the screen uh, over to my <laughs> very far, well, I guess it's my left, but far right of the screen for you guys. Uh, we have great. our boy, the man with the in-depth animation analysis, uh, Mr. Go. Dokon Assets, aka Theo. How's it going, my dude? What's up, man? I'm doing pretty good today. And over to my left is... <laughs> <It's> no one. <laughs> no so one. yeah, our boy... So yeah, our boy Minato's Flash, look at this guy out here, had to work... Couldn't get out of it. Didn't, you know, didn't just quit his job for the sake of the podcast. I mean, come on, what is he like? So unfortunately, just like the, uh, just like the LR Rosé EZA, he is currently missing in action. So uh, shout out to our boy. Um, he has recorded a couple of bits for um, the segments that we have coming up later on. Uh, we have a much more expanded trash takes section for today because oh, yeah. we have a uh, we have a big one that got a lot of uh, view a lot of attention a lot of replies that we definitely want to cover um but because uh, we don't want to show any favorites you guys probably know which one it is from someone pretty big in the community you probably know him but we don't want to show favoritism to other creators so we do have another no one from somebody else as well so we have a couple of those to go through um and then obviously a few things here to talk about this week now obviously uh the big thing that i'm sure we're kind of all very much aware of is that there's not a huge amount going on at the moment and the hottest topic that i guess we should just jump into straight away since it is uh you know part of the thumbnail alongside our missing comrade is uh <laughs> our boy lr rose goku black so we talked about i think was the leak uh, well, I say leak, but the thing in the files was it? Did we talk about it on the last episode? Was it out at that point? I think it yes. was. But... I think we mentioned it only because I remember I was like, I wanted to tell the story about um, like the moment that it came out, and I was like so confused. So mm. I think it, yeah, it was out by last time. Um, is that data download? I'm looking back right now. Mm. Um, was on the twentieth yeah um okay so yeah so been, yes yeah. it would have been out by then um yeah obviously with that data download right for i mean i don't know how you wouldn't know if you're in the Doki community but at this <laughs> yeah. point um because that's all everybody's been talking about but um of course with the data download last time global um added into the files where it's basically like on your profile right you can get a little banner um mm -hmm. that has like either like an event thing like obviously we got you know like uh i thought that it confirmed goku black but it did it the one for the mortal will event <laughs> um which title right obviously they have those for the ezas yep. um and so on the eza one uh there was a untranslated asset for goku black's eza on global um which is why everybody was you know obviously thinking that it was going to happen and as you can see, it unfortunately has not. So, yep. um, obviously, that has led um, a lot of us to believe that either, right? I know this week, a lot of people were thinking that we were going to get, um, you know, like some kind of announcement on, like, the Dokkan Twitter, right? Where mm -hmm. um, they would announce the EZA details. I, I swear to you, like um because it's like 3 a.m my time which is so funny because you know it's like that you know who posts still kind of with 3 a.m <laughs> 3 a.m you know but so like literally every 3 a.m this week i've been just like you know refreshing the timeline yep. coping that there's gonna be some kind of new post yeah um yeah my uh more my early stream well early for me my early stream is like 7 a.m and then i usually go until 9 a.m uk time which is when usually the jp twitter will tweet stuff mm. so it's like the last couple of days it's been getting to that time that we're going to be wrapping up the stream and it's like right let's go refresh twitter like have they posted anything because <laughs> the thing is if they are going to drop some kind of surprise thing to end the celebration we're obviously not going to get any sort of forward notice and it is just going right. to be one of those things that it will just randomly get tweeted out at some point so we're kind of um 
left waiting to see what will happen. So I want to get your thoughts on this. I know we talked about it a little bit before we started the uh, show, but I did make a video earlier today talking about the possibility of Goku Black's release and the uh, worst case scenario that, you know, it's in the files, but we've seen things get added to the files, especially untranslated JP stuff being added to global often happens way earlier then the stuff yeah. is scheduled to come out. Because I think, I can't remember if it was a couple of data downloads ago or something, but isn't like all the Turles stuff like already in the global files, like untranslated. So yeah, Goku Black might not be coming yeah. soon. So what are you, what's your sort of thoughts or your experience on when they add this stuff in for the data downloads? Because I know you do dig into all of that stuff. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting, right? Because it's a little bit different than global has been doing it like recently kind of right like they've been doing this sort of thing for a little bit now where they add in um you know stuff that's not going to be coming for even like months and months and months at a time mm. um you know like like you said turles um i know they've already added some of the super saiyan 4 goku stuff um you know a bunch of like the upcoming dokkan fest but i feel like lately the way that they've been doing it a lot more is that they've been just adding like a huge bundle of stuff all at once um where like you know they've been adding like gigabytes of data yeah. i guess is the best <laughs> way to say it right i know everybody's been like so um up in arms whenever a new data download drops and it's like another 10 gigabyte update <laughs> and everybody's like oh boy my storage yep. space <laughs> um i feel like though at least in recent memory, I can't really remember as much of like a moment where it was just a one-off thing. I'm sure that they do do it. And obviously this thing with Rosé will kind of be more stuck in my mind and I'm sure in everybody's mind, considering <laughs> that, you know, obviously it's like a bigger deal than, you know, something that we already know is coming. Yep. Um, but yes, Global does do this type of thing a lot. It was also just like kind of weird too, because obviously not only is this a dual celebration so you would think that you know they would be putting the same stuff yeah. in the data download at the same time um but it was also weird because it was like it was only that right like i was mm -hmm. saying they usually the image, add yeah. like right they usually add a bunch of stuff right like for turlist for example right they added like story assets and like essay assets and his ost and stuff like that and if this EZA, you know, like, it's weird because they didn't add, like, the, you know, the assets for, like, the actual event, right? Like, you yeah. know, his little character that pops up between and then, like, the little, um, you know, when the character transforms in the event, they have the little, like, text for his essay quote or whatever mm -hmm. pop up. Um, none of that, right, was in there at all. Um, so it was just very strange that it was this one-off asset that they added into the game i swear added it in to troll us like yeah <laughs> they were like yeah we know that you guys have been down bad with goku black this entire celebration so we're gonna do a little bit of trolling yeah um, there's uh, been a lot of crying outcry of global shenanigans on uh on yeah. twitter that i've seen so <laughs> like and it's weird right because usually like you know for the meme you know it's kind of funny to jump on global sometimes because obviously global makes these like goofy mistakes and stuff like that but um like i feel like in this case right like i guess it is technically a little bit of a global meme because of course it was in global's files but i don't know if i would even say that this is like globals this time because i don't know i would assume right that it's going to be coming out on both especially considering the theme of the celebration well, yeah and so i would think that it would be like you know it just happens to be that global accidentally like threw it in there this time i don't know i'm a little bit inclined to like not call it as much of a global l as it is a dokkan l this time to be yeah. honest i know i think i'm, I'm choking your ego here <laughs> global gang rise up but yeah it's um well the thing about it that is weird is i know we always speculate and we always talk about, I think we did mention this briefly last week when we talked about it, but like as much as sometimes we feel like obviously the devs don't listen to like the community and stuff like that, they, they to a certain extent have to be aware of what the community talks about and what they do as right. a whole. So at this point, after all these years, they must know that 
there are people that look in the files whenever there's a data oh, yeah. download. So if it was put in there deliberately for a reason, they would know that people would then find it. Um, and like you said, the weird right. thing is, if it was a, if they were actually just going to drop his event like very soon, you would think it was going to come out on both versions because it's part of the worldwide celebration. So why is it only in the global version? Um, right. And then, like you said, it's missing a lot of the assets that we would expect. Like if the EZA event was going to drop like tomorrow, for example, there's a bunch of assets yeah, that should already. already be there that are not there. Um, so it does seem very weird. I mean, you could almost say it is literally like a global error in the sense that somebody's literally like dragged and dropped the files from one folder yeah. to the uh, the fresh data download folder and they've accidentally dragged the uh, Rosé banner over instead yep. and it's not supposed to come out for ages. Because uh, one of the things that uh, Proton, I know, said in the chat is the worst case mm -hmm. scenario for global, I guess, is it comes out very soon for JP and global has to wait. Um, and yeah. the thing is, there's a couple of different scenarios where that could happen, but I do find them all very strange. So like if the next Dokkan Fest on JP was a new Goku Black and then in that celebration, yep. the Rosé Easy A's, the biggest question is why? <laughs> like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. After a Future Saga themed month long celebration, like why would you wait until after that to then do a new Goku Black? It seems like such a weird timing. You would assume that a new Goku Black is going to be coming at least after some kind of delay. Right. Um, and the thing that I sp talked about in my video that I think would be kind of cool is um, the earliest point I could see them bringing out a new Goku Black, if it was going to be on both versions at the same time, not saying that it will, of course, um, yeah. was obviously we have the potential for last year. We could say that it was solely because of the superhero movie stuff. But mm -hmm. with the sync being a thing that we know is going to happen at some point, I feel like it's probably a very strong likelihood that the new year, Jewel Dokkan Fest, is going to be on both versions mm -hmm. at the same time again. Uh -huh. um and so i know some people probably wouldn't be as hyped for like the super unit i guess but i think it'd be kind of cool if they did a jewel dokon fest and we got a new rose and then a blue vegeta um because i think we talked about it before but that fight between blue vegeta and rose is really cool obviously it doesn't mm -hmm. end well for vegeta but at least at the start <laughs> if you're a vegeta fan like the bit where he's like beating him down into the ground and yeah everything. Like, grabbing we, his hair we, yeah. yeah exactly we only have the one really old like in dokon fest uh vegeta that has that super attack yeah. and obviously he's so old now that's obviously that super attack animation is very very outdated oh, so yeah. a new version of that i think would be super cool plus you know vegeta we always get new gokus we need a new good like top tier vegeta vegeta family yep. still crying out for buffs so <laughs> for me personally i think that would be awesome um but yeah i feel like that's the soonest we could see a goku black that comes out on both versions so for global it would be very disappointing if it came out on jp even if it's not right after the worldwide yeah. celebration but imagine it was like the november dokon fest for jp and then it's like yep Dude, if you're on oh jp now you get a new goku black and you can throw him on your lr zamasu team but if you're on global unless they do speed up the sync or whatever it means we're not going to get him until like february or something which uh would obviously be very disappointing um how yeah. how what do you think about that like if we're not going to get him soon when do you think we potentially would see or could see a new goku black well you know that's a good point right so Obviously, the, if they do do a Dokkan Fest as, like, the next one being Goku Black, that would be such a, just, like, <laughs> not only, almost feel, like, disrespectful, kind of, in a yeah. way. Like, it would just feel a little bit, like, wrong, um, to be honest. Like, I would think, right? Because the thing that also makes me kind of, now that, like, all this time has passed and you know, it's basically like I think we've all learned to cope or get past mm. our cope that there <laughs> that Rose is gonna be coming out during the celebration, right? Is easy A. Mm -hmm. It is also the fact that it's untranslated, right? With the asset yeah. that um, you know, it's a little bit like fishy, right? Because you would think if it is gonna be a dual celebration, it's gonna come out soon or like for some secret EX part or something. Um that if that was the case, right, then you would think it would already be translated because, you know, what would be the point of it being um, yeah. in Japanese, right, at that rate? That yeah, would it's just, like, it why, doesn't really make sense. why even put the untranslated um, version in the global version, right? Because right. if they were bringing exactly. it out for both versions at the same time, you would think they'd made the English version at the same time as well. Right, yeah. exactly. So, hmm. I don't know. 
I would think that maybe if that is the case, it might be a little bit farther down the line. I mean, that would definitely, I feel like if they are going to do Rosé and it really isn't like next year or something <laughs> like that, um, then I guess it would have to be like the the October, November Dokkan Fest. I kind of feel like it would be a little bit weird for it to be the Dokkan Fest right after Worldwide, yeah. only because, right, like, that not only does that just feel kind of off considering it's like you know the whole celebration was based on this theme and then we're doing another one based off this theme like at that point why not just like release the dokkan fest like annie said in the comments right why not just or make like a dokkan fest rose as like an ex part at that yep. rate and then just call that the next month's dokkan fest i so. guess they could do that actually because so one of the things that we talked about before we started the mm -hmm. show which i actually missed when i made my own video earlier um, is that we were talking about the EX part or like the potential of an EX part and if they could do it. Um, and obviously for global, uh, this part I did mention earlier, but the, for global, the next Dokkan Fest last year came out on the 4th of October, which is in like six days. <laughs> so if they're yeah. going to drop an EX part, um, we would assume with no information having come out so far, probably wouldn't expect it to drop over the weekend. Um, so potentially yeah. Monday at the earliest, which I guess for us uh, and like the US is like Sunday evening and really early for mm -hmm. me Sunday morning. Um, and then that doesn't leave much time until the next thing comes out. So I was thinking that whilst it's not impossible that they do that, it seems weird. And I was trying to think if they'd ever done that something like that before. Um, and then when we were discussing it earlier before the show, the one thing I remembered that we sort of looked up here on the wiki, when you look at the timeline for JP, now obviously this is going back to the um, seventh anniversary. Um, so, you know, it's an anniversary, so it kind of is special, like it has its own rules sometimes. But for the seventh anniversary, which is the first time we kind of saw them drop this big surprise, like EX part type thing, mm -hmm. um, they dropped the LR EZA for the LR Super Saiyan 4s. Um, and that came out on JP on the 1st of March. So right at the end of the anniversary. Mm. And then the Dokkan Fest Captain Ginyu came out on the 3rd of March. So they have done that before. They've dropped an EX part for a celebration and then literally released the next Dokkan Fest two days later. So yep. in theory, they could drop on Monday an EX part that has LR Rosé's EZA and then literally on like Wednesday or Thursday, just drop the next Ocon Fest for JP sure. and then potentially like, um, you know, Turles for Global or something, right? Because this is, I'm looking at the JP right. timeline. So this is the, mm -hmm. on JP, literally the EX part dropped. And then two days later, the Captain Ginyu Dokkan Fest came That's out. That's wild. So, <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, for us, it's cool because it's like, it's a short gap between content. But obviously, if they're just dropping like an LR EZA, like most people are going to get that done in what? Like the LR ones are only 10 stages. Most people are going to get that done in like half an hour, have some time to yep. mess around with the new unit in the new events for a day or two, and then new actual stuff comes out. So... I mean, I don't want to get my hopes up that that is what they're doing because I was kind of losing hope of the potential of an EX part. Um... But yeah, I mean, they did do that. That And again, it was for an anniversary. So we don't want to say like, oh, yeah, see, they've done it before. They'll do it again. But I right. think I feel like it's not off the table. So, yeah, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> something to take into consideration. Right. It, it like that was I remember that being really weird because it was like it was like, wait, is Ginyu part of the anniversary <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or like, <laughs> you know, is the anniversary just extending into Ginyu? Like, I don't know. Yeah, um, it's very weird timing when it happened on JP. Yeah. yeah, it was very strange. I mean, I will say the other thing to consider as well mm -hmm. um, with this, and I know that this is um, something else that we discussed um, pre-podcast as well. And this could even maybe lead us into uh, the next point of discussion that we want to talk about too. But mm -hmm. um, with Global, they are ending the... Uh, four times xp and the yep. three minute stamina refresh earlier than jp i think it's like a whole five days earlier yeah um which is great mm -hmm. considering like you know obviously both of the games started at the same time in terms of like when the actual celebration began right yep. um Obviously, both of them, like, started on the same day and the units released on the same day and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember, um, funny enough, Annie, shout out to my the boy in the chat again. 
Um, he was talking about how like, yeah, I think it's always sweet. <laughs> yeah, it was like, bro, what? The, I think I even might have quote retweeted it. That like, it's just such a strange decision because, uh-huh. you know, it also kind of I feel like ironically enough. Um, yeah, they always end at the exact same time as the new celebration begins. That's why it's especially weird that it's ending early on global, right? Exactly. Like. It's also weird, too, because, you know, again, it's supposed to be a dual celebration. So why would it not have stuff happen at the same time? You know, yep. especially considering we're trying to get sync. to the point of this, like, version sync, right? Yeah. You would think that they would want everything to be there at the same time. Oh, there is one more thing that I do want to mention about um, Goku Black, actually, before okay. we move on. Just because I was scrolling to find Annie's tweet and I saw another tweet that reminded me about it. Um yeah, unfortunately, um, I know <clears throat> to only add on to the uh, the pain and suffering of a Dokkan community when it comes to uh, LR Rose's Easy A, eh? the uh, the Dokkan Wiki. Oh um, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you saw that. They they accidentally yeah, I, ta- I tagged them and someone cover. someone posted a screenshot and I tagged them saying, "Explain yourself." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like it was real rough because so, um. I guess. Oh, Annie literally DM me the tweet. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, because it's um, like they posted it on their section where it's like the units coming soon and it had yeah, a countdown and yeah. everything. And so everybody in the community was like, where are you getting this from? <laughs> right. They were like, bro, I, see, you know, it's so funny too. So the person who was uh, a staff member at the Dokkan community, right? Or mm-hmm. the Dokkan community, the, uh, the Dokkan wiki, right? Yeah. They, um, they quote retweeted my tweet talking about it okay um and they gave like an explanation um i didn't see like that, saying actually. yeah i'll see if i can find it they basically were like talking about how one of the staff members um they kind of went off of like the assumption because you remember uh i think it would have been like wednesday morning technically um we thought that um that you know they were going to drop the info then yep um yeah because the global and... maintenance was happening like the next morning wasn't it yeah Right, exactly. And so um, it turns out that apparently, because um, they, they tweeted out like a picture from the, the Dokkan Wiki staff discord. Um, I guess it was just, it was literally posted on an assumption yeah. by one of the staff members um, that they just thought that the info was going to, um, you know, that the info is going to be released. So mm-hmm. um, they said that we shouldn't operate off of assumptions. So we'll make sure it never happens again. Sorry for the inconvenience. So um, that was very, uh, that was very nice that they made like a, a pseudo announcement about it. Yeah. Um, and not only that, I also DM them the day before. Funny enough, um, I didn't get a DM back from them until after that tweet, which is fine. I mean, obviously, you know, not everybody's like stalking their Twitter DMs <laughs> like I am, <laughs> you know, um, so <laughs> You know, but yeah, they basically were just like, yeah, it was just an accident. So, um, yeah. in case you were confused on that, but I, the only other reason why I wanted to bring it up is just because it's just more like fuel to the fire for this yeah. whole rose <laughs> thing being missing, unfortunately. Um, oh. well, shout out so, to the wiki guys, oh. you know, everyone makes yeah. mistakes. I mean, the thing is, yeah. shout out to them because obviously that's Everyone's an asset human. that we've all used over the years. I still use it oh, yeah. for my like bringing up the units for my team building guides and all that stuff. So oh, yeah. shout out to those guys. Uh, we Absolutely. forgive you. <laughs> yes. So, we do. Uh, and then, like, you know, it's everybody's human, right? I mean, like, you know, yeah. And uh, you know, in this case, right? Like, obviously, you know, it's not the best to go off assumptions, but in this case, bro, like, I'm going to blame the homie, bro. Like, I'm yeah. going to have done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, oh, so Poor before we go on to the next yeah. bit, uh, just wanted a quick reminder, if you guys want to help support the podcast, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or shout outs, anything like that, um, any donations or super chats will all be read out at the end of the show. Uh, we try and keep an eye out on the chat just for things that are kind of relevant to what we're talking about, but obviously we can't constantly take breaks during topics to read everything out so if you want to get any shout outs or any questions in at the end um, and also help to support the show um, you can do that and those will all be read out in the final section so the thing that i wanted to say because obviously i think mentioning that thing about the goku black wiki was definitely uh worth mentioning so now a lot of Mm -hmm. people if you did see that in passing and you were curious um now you know uh, why that happened um but one of the things i was going to say the i don't i'm you know me i i say it all the time i say it on twitter so i like to be the glass half full guy i don't want to give them too much credit but (laughs) the only thing that i'm thinking of with this whole um 
the global thing ending earlier than JP mm-hmm. is obviously we are all very up in the air at the moment about what is going to happen on global after the worldwide celebration, because we yep. genuinely have no idea whether we're going to stick by a similar schedule as last year, or if they are going to start accelerating things because of the sync, are we going to get, you know, multiple units releasing at the same time? Are we going to get a one piece treasure cruise situation where they drop a banner that has like three yep. new units on it or something, or even they all the new units? Um, I was going to be like, let's, Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so one thing I think that could be potentially happening, because was it like four times XP or something like that at the moment, um, mm-hmm. and the extra stamina is. Imagine yeah. if they are doing something. Yeah, literally, Annie. That's what I was going to say. The man over here mind reading me in the chat. Like, what if after <laughs> the worldwide on global, we get the start of what is like some kind of sync celebration, and then that, that cool. brings with it for global four times xp and like the five boosts and all that stuff so basically the technically the one we're getting for the worldwide ends early but then we're just getting it again for like a new celebration right that's kind of the way i could see that it would be perfectly reasonable for it to end early for global because then it's just restarting again like straight away but as part of a different celebration because i don't see why they would do that if they were just dropping turles like if they were just dropping the turles celebration as it was on jp and they're not going to start accelerating towards the sink just yet then it doesn't why would they add in like you know four times xp and all the extra boosts maybe they just will anyway and There's some issue with the code or something that because they're changing over to a new celebration, it has to end and then start again. I I don't know enough about it to say that that is impossible or not possible. I don't really know. Um, But like you think that they could just keep it going just because a new celebration is starting. So there, I feel like there's got to be a reason. And I know people like to be down on the devs, especially at the moment with some of the disappointing stuff in the worldwide, but it does seem like a very odd choice that they're just like, no, it just ends a week early on global. Sorry. Like I, I just, yeah, I'm hoping there's got to be some kind of reason. And yeah, if it's because it starts again as part of a new celebration, who knows, maybe even because they're going to do some crazy, you know, sync celebration, it actually goes up to like five times XP. And that's why the four times XP is ending or something, right? Like, you know, it could could be. So it's not impossible. But um, yeah, yeah, yes. I mean, that's obviously something that we have to wait and see, right? Because... Right. Yeah, I don't know. But um, I think it's uh, definitely interesting because obviously, as you said, everything in the worldwide celebration usually is and has been in the past all the same. So it just right. seems very strange that it's ending early. Um, I mean, it could be an oversight in the maybe someone yeah. just typed the wrong number in the news thing and it is not actually ending early. <laughs> Who knows? Zero. Yeah, like, I don't know. But um because like yeah, it literally could know. even be the case that it's not ending early and it's literally just a typo on the thing in the news for all we know. But yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I don't want to oh. give them too much credit because otherwise we get accused of uh, glazing Dokon too much. But like, uh, you know, yeah. I don't want to give them too much credit, but I like to be optimistic. So I, <laughs> I feel like there's no, got to be some it. reason why. I mean, maybe. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that may, ironically enough, I know the homie Proton is in the chat and he was saying they can keep it going. I yeah. don't know if he could check, I don't think that that's a thing in the database. I'm pretty sure that's something server side that you would like be able to check when it actually like ends. I don't know if you can check that, honestly. Mm. Um, that would be more of a Proton question. He's he's definitely more of a big brain on that than me. I just <laughs> enjoy the funny PNGs. But, um, <laughs> we do you know, like, PNGs. <laughs> of course, bro. Um, it, you know, it does like make me wonder though, like if they are going to do the um, the sync like this soon, or um, you know, someone in the chat was kind of mentioning too, like will they just kind of forego JP for the moment in terms of like stuff to be able to get the global synced up, or um, you know, like obviously it's all up in the air and it's basically going to be as soon as worldwide ends that will be when we kind of start to get an inkling because i know there's been a lot of debate of people being like oh you know is the sync going to begin like now or is it going to begin at the end of the year or you know will global even be getting jp's anniversary you know and then obviously going into next year how are they going to handle that um it will be interesting to see i would like i would like to think if they are announcing this now, right? That they would be starting the process of getting the versions synced up sooner rather than later. But then again, Dokon has done stuff in the past where they announce something that's like kind of a big change 
for the game or like a big update or something like that and they announce it like really far in advance yeah. but they don't really get to it until really later down the line right that's not something that they haven't done before um you know it's a lot different than just like oh the next monthly dokon fest or yeah. you know like the next new event or whatever um yeah. you know obviously it's like a pretty big change um right the notorious version z took like nine months to yeah come out, i think right? we talked about that in the last episode though it's like we i think did, the difference yeah. between that is version z was just a very like right very update, vague yeah. very amorphous like hey we're bringing out an update to the game and it's called version That's z true. and that was all they said and we so we had no idea what that would be when the first yeah. few bits came out we didn't know if that was all of it or if there was going to be more until they said specifically but i mean in this case it's they're very specific like obviously they haven't said how they're going to do it but by announcing the version syncing up we know exactly what that means essentially that's true um, that's and true. i do think there's got to be some relevance to them announcing it during the worldwide celebration because obviously right. the game's being synced means everything will be at the same time but because it mainly affects global there's no reason why they couldn't have just announced it as a global only thing right like they could be dropping let's say for example they decide to do something like turles and trunks at the same time and they could literally have just done a producer letter a couple of days before we're That's expecting true. that october dokon fest saying hey global or the international version as they call it in those things we are right. going to be syncing up with jp and this is what we're going to do the next celebration is going to be turles and trunks at the same time but they chose to do it as part of the worldwide celebration so right. i feel like that has some kind of relevance like i don't know why you would announce it this early and again we're not to say they couldn't announce it and then wait like a whole year to do it um but i think one of the things we said last True. time as well which i have seen some people mention on twitter which i think is actually a very good point is the anniversary being synced in february would probably be an ideal goal i think for most people especially for global yeah. players right but I think what is true is that what you have to think about with the way the schedule is kind of messed up at the moment for Global, uh, working around the anniversary and say and day and the other stuff that is synced already, is there's no reason why the anniversaries can't be synced, even if Global isn't fully caught up to JP yet. Like Ooh. if JP, if we get to the point where Global's caught up mostly, but we're missing like one Dokon Fest, you know, like the January Dokon Fest for JP and then the anniversaries in February. There's no reason why they can't have the anniversary at the same time. And then Global yeah. gets that January Dokon Fest from JP at the end of the anniversary. Um, and then, yeah, like they kind of catch up that way. Um, so, yeah, even if they take a little bit longer to get fully synced, I feel like that mm -hmm. doesn't make the synced anniversary like off the table just because everything else isn't fully synced yet. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, the anniversary, I mean, that's the thing we talked about many times before, and it's the reason why I've always wanted the games to sync for so long, is as we've gotten more and more celebrations that are at the same time, um, it just makes the schedule so much more complicated for Global. Because I think yeah. it's almost, we're almost at the point where half <laughs> of the celebrations of the year are at the same time, if we're going to yeah. be consistently getting New Year's at the same time, right? Because right. we've got Saiyan Day, Golden Week, Worldwide Celebration, Heroes, and then New Year's. It's like each, yep. like there's significant chunks in each quarter that are same time. And so then everything else for global has to like fit in around that and it becomes really awkward. Um, but yeah, shout out to Prof. That is very true. As long as Heroes is synced, as long as we don't miss out on Heroes, <laughs> that's the, yeah. Uh, that's the main thing. So, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> you gotta so, get those heroes yeah. re references in there somewhere, right? So, uh, of course. But yeah, it'll be you very know, interesting to see what they do. Uh, yeah i'm really curious honestly i was because i i know i made a, a tweet about that too like talking about like you know how the rest of the year is going to go with the sync and everything's going to be really interesting in terms of how they do it um the because i think we'll probably talk about this i'm sure when we get a little bit closer to the new year's actual like celebration but mm -hmm. um you know talking about new year's just like as a, a small quick aside i do i do wonder how they are going to handle that um, this is for, for uh, future Theo to come back to this clip and prove himself <laughs> right or wrong here. Clip him, boys. Um, <laughs> clip him, boys. But, um, you know, I'm going to be really interested to see as well how they do New Year's, not only for, like, the fact that obviously, you know, like, the, the whole synced um, aspect of it now, right? Because mm -hmm. obviously now that seems like um, a celebration that they're probably going to keep synced, but... I am wondering how they're going to handle that going forward if they are going to keep those units as LRs 
Um, only because, like, mm. last year, right? Obviously, for superhero, that was the reason why they were LRs, right? Yeah, they wanted I can see to make that. them. Yeah, yeah, it was like a special thing, right? But at the same time, I feel like it would also be really weird to kind of go like "quote unquote" backwards, you know? Yeah, because like... yeah, I see your point. Because the thing is, I am I'm yeah. one of those people now. Because I, you know, we're from the OG days. I remember the days where there was like two LRs in the game. Um, yeah. I feel like they have accelerated very much, right? Where there's obviously so many yeah. LRs now. Um, and to be honest, as long as they are good, right? Like if you look at like 23rd World Tournament, Goku and Piccolo Jr. Mm -hmm. Like I would have no problem with the New Year's Jewel Dokkan Fest being TURs as long as they're good oh, yeah. units, right? Like um, obviously no, LRs is always nice because, um, you know, you get multiple animations, especially if they have an active skill or a revive or something like that because they have two super mm -hmm. attacks. Um, but then we don't want to get into situations where we're making units LRs for the sake of it. And then it's like, oh, they're 12 key super. It's right. kind of lame. It's like, well... They could have just been a TUR then, um, right. and uh, I guess we could see. But yeah, I would I would definitely have no problem with the New Year's Jewel Doe Confess being TURs um, as long as they're good, right? I, but yeah, it's be interesting to see what yeah. you what they do because, like you said, I do think some people would obviously say that it's like a step back. Um, but then, of course, as well, it adds in more Doe Confess exclusive LRs, which means then right. as we go forward and we get more. You know, when we get to the worldwide, when we get to the anniversary, it's like more Dokkan Fest LRs that have to return on these banners. Right. Um, well, That's I mean, true. I guess to be fair, as more LRs have been added into the game, they have been putting LRs on more like random banners as well. But we're going to get to the point yeah. where we're going to be getting like, you know, filler Dokkan Fest, if you want to call it that. Like no insult to the unit, but filler Dokkan Fest like Turles. We're gonna get <laughs> releases like that, but then they're gonna but then they're gonna have like a Dokkan Fest LR featured on the banner because there's no other places to fit them into the schedule so they can return on other banners. Um Right. Exactly. But yeah, it'd be interesting yeah. to see. Because yeah, like I say, I mean there's enough LRs. Uh, I we could get into the whole other topic, but we're not gonna get into that today, I don't think. But I don't think yeah, we need no, a new no. rarity anytime soon. But yeah, there are no. a lot of LRs. Um, yeah, a ton. Yes. Honestly. Oh, yeah. Because what was it? The Goku and Gohan. What if from last year's Golden Week was the hundredth LR, wasn't it? So something um, like that. I think yeah. it was which the hundredth cool. one, which is cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. So oh, wait, that just registered my mind. That's crazy to think about a hundred LRs. Like, yeah. I'm looking oh at my, my box right now. I have a hundred and thirty LRs, and I'm pretty That's sure crazy. I have every single one. So. Well, actually that saying that, wild. I have 130 LRs, but that's because I do have spare SA5 copies of some of the ones that don't have their easy mm. A's yet. So there's not actually 130 in the game because I gotcha. have some extra copies. But it's somewhere, it's going to be somewhere around 120 uh, ish. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm yeah. definitely not missing LR Int Bojack. No, that is my uh, <laughs> my most pulled easy A. I have his SSR and TUR rainbowed, and that is from getting nice. him to SA10 with copies pulled, not like Kai's Let's or farming go. a super attack. So that means I've pulled what, like 39 copies or something or oh whatever it is to get <laughs> to get all of those rainbows. So <laughs> yeah, you got to love Gross. summoning on LR banners and getting a guaranteed LR animation. And then it's the LR that you already have the LR and the TUR rainbow. So that's, yep. uh, that's always nice. Um, yeah, but um, that's exactly <laughs> what I felt about my 30 or my 50, uh, 50. Yeah. The 50 ticket multi that I got, um, LR three coup, the one who still doesn't have his easy. Oh, and I have that dude. rainbow, the TUR. So yep. he was oh, the wow. first <laughs> summonable LR that I ever rainbowed. So it was, uh, yeah. it was great. And then obviously every time he popped up after that, then it's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, I got Mighty Mask for my 50 summon LR. Oh, so. It's so much worse. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's worse because he has his easy already, easy A already, but he sucks. Yeah. Whereas at least Super yeah. Saiyan 3 Goku, like his easy A is still to come, so it could be really good. Um. <laughs> I hope he is, man. I like, I personally, um, uh, Super Saiyan 3 is my favorite form yes. in Dragon Ball. So it's just so good. Uh, yep. And like, not only is i guess like the thing that's so unfortunate about him not having an easy a is that he doesn't have one and i like can't use him in anything but like battlefield basically but yeah like at the bare minimum i guess the nice thing is that hopefully his easy a will be like cracked because he's going to be coming out so late in the game mm -hmm. um i would hope right i would definitely hope that that would be the case 
Um, because obviously, if it's not cracked after waiting all this time, we're gonna have another Inkoku Black situation on our hands. Maybe not to that extent, because obviously, I think people, you know, are maybe more excited for him to ECA. But either way, though, yeah, um, definitely hope that his ECA is cracked whenever it comes out. But yeah, yeah, I, so. I think, um, I think it'll be interesting to see with New Year's, right? And you know. The other thing that was kind of interesting with New Year's is I do wonder how good they'll make the units again, because obviously, like, you know, Orange Piccolo was the New Year's unit last yep. year, and he's still my my goat unit. Yep. I'm sure those of you who follow me on Twitter in the chat have seen me gassing this man up like 24-7, my stupid, uh, you know, if nobody got yeah. me, Orange Piccolo got me meme, which is true, bro. I mean, he, dude, he, uh, you can easily still make okay. arguments for him being the best unit in the game, right? Easily. Yeah. Um, the other, all the top contenders like Bulma, Future Gohan, um, mm. like I said it when I made my top 10 list recently, like there's those three, the, we call them the big three. <laughs> The the, uh, the yep. my hero meme. Mm -hmm. Um, if yep. you say if you basically if anyone tells me that any of those three units they think are the best unit in the game, I, I don't really even see the point of arguing. It's like yeah, I can yeah. see that. Like you know, on any given yeah. day, on any different particular event, I could see switching those three around into the number one spot like quite easily. Um, yeah, and yeah, Piccolo still incredibly good. Um, can drop him into any team like we're getting bosses that hit you so hard now that i've actually now quite regularly seen his ability where you drop below 30 percent hp and he gives you the full heal and then gets yep. the extra damage reduction so essentially becomes almost invincible like he's he's just so good and that whole giant form thing canceling out the boss super attacks and stuff like that that is uh you know he's just still Still that good. Double Piccolo team yes, with the double transformation shenanigans can still absolutely just shut down like the end of difficult events. Because I yeah. don't know if people realize if you haven't had a chance to use them yourself against Samasu or if you've seen other like haven't seen anyone else doing it. Um, it shuts down like the AOEs as well and things like mm -hmm. healing, like any of those special abilities that enemies can do that aren't normal attacks. Those will all get shut down by um piccolo's active skill i mean obviously if it's the heal they'll still heal during the giant phase but then when you come out of it just like a super they can't do it again on that turn so still very very good but yeah yeah it'd be very new interesting because new year's is one of those if new year's the units end up being on that level of power where they are releasing and being almost the best new units in the game it gets very mm -hmm. tricky i guess you jp players have had to put up with this for a while but then when once yeah. everything's synced <laughs> then it's like you got these units that have come out that are super super good that you want to summon for and then the anniversary happens like a yep. month later <laughs> yeah that's so, about I can't tell you how, like, for me, because I'm a huge superhero fan. Like, I, I absolutely love Dragon Ball Superhero. Like, I've, mm -hmm. I think I've watched the movie, like, six times by now. Nice. Um, and I'm probably going to watch it a seventh, honestly, when I finally get the 4K <laughs> DVD. I, like, I don't even, like, really buy DVDs for movies, but I was like... <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we're purchasing it. And I can't tell you how hard that was for me. You, you know, you and I both love... Uh, you know, SDBH going from that celebration to that superhero. And, and then, then full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku as well for JP, like coming out. Yeah. Uh, for, oh, sorry, oh. for Global is right after Heroes. So if you're a Heroes yeah. oh, enjoyer true. like me. That's true. Yeah, yeah. We, get a, we get a Dokon Fest at the beginning of November because I think last year it was the ROF Blues. Then we get Heroes and then like a week later we get full power Super Saiyan 4 Goku. That's if they don't change any of the schedule, of course um because we don't know right based on the sync um right. so yeah we talked a little bit about stuff coming up in the future we are going to talk about yeah. that in a bit more detail at the end so maybe we'll come back to the sync stuff uh, depending on how much time we end up having left but the only yeah. other thing that we kind of wanted to get in here i mean this doesn't have to be a particularly long segment because it covers <laughs> a few of the things that we talked about because the note that i had here was uh chain battle Woo! Everyone's favorite game mode. Um, and then obviously the only other thing it said, is this really it for the end of the worldwide celebration? So we kind of covered that a little bit when we discussed the potential of the EX part and stuff like that. But for the chain battle itself, yeah, Prof, I know you're happy. The only person I know of in my chat that gets excited for chain battle. Um, <laughs> so yeah, how have you found this uh, this chain battle? Did you manage to secure the top 1%? Have you got those uh, the whale friends that do the job for you or...? <laughs> 
Um, well, I haven't gotten 1%. I mean, to be honest with you, like, every time I do chain battle, I do my best. I think I got, I took a screenshot of it. Hold on, let me grab my screenshot. I think I got, okay. like, 110 million or something on, like, my best attempt so far. Okay. Um, which I guess is not, yeah, 110 mil, which is not, like, terrible, I guess. Right? No, I, I feel like I if you're, in, if like, you're breaking 100 million, like, on the first day, so you can just beat all of the missions, I feel like that is definitely a good start, right? Like, if it's difficult yeah. for people to get into the top 1% if you're not, if you don't have all of the crazy friends, which... Obviously, there are a lot of resources out yeah. there to help you do that. Like, if you're on Twitter, there's a bunch of people that always tweet that have, like, a Discord mm -hmm. group that will, like, they'll, un they'll like, they basically just Discord. add people as friends. Yeah, they add people as friends so you can use their supporters. That's and then great. when you've managed to get top 1%, then you, they'll just unfriend you and, like, add a whole bunch of other new people. So there are some resources out there to help you. Um, I have a few good people yeah. just on my list in general anyway. So uh, let us know in the chat yeah. what your top scores are. But my, I am yeah. currently yeah. still top 1%, but mine is only 132 million. I'm just going to look at the results here to see what some of the high scores are. But all the, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the ones that I'm seeing on the high score list are in the 140s. Oh, wow. There's someone that has 151. Dang. Jeez. Also, shout out That's to the really boys. Uh, we got Toon Rami's on here, 146. And uh, Goresh with 143. Ooh, Goresh beating, right. uh, Toon beating Goresh. Ooh, you love to see it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, all the high score leaderboards are all in the 140s, except for one person that has 150. So I have no idea. If you're, if anyone in the chat is in the top 2%, uh, or the 2 to 3 bracket, let us know what the uh, what it tells you the barrier is. Someone said they were at 129 and still top 1%. So that's reassuring to me who's at 132. <laughs> if you drop down into the top 2 to 3, then I have to start getting worried. But... Uh... <laughs> But yeah, chain battle. Uh, I mean, we don't need to go into a huge amount of detail. I feel like I've uh, I've made my peace with this mode many times. Uh, I hate it. Yeah. I do not like it at all. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't like it either. I like it's, uh, the thing I don't like about it is we do have a much better understanding of how it works now. But there's still so many elements of it that I feel like a lot of people don't understand. Like even Me. now, I've seen people <laughs> having discussions about how much the three characters that you pick, like in the fight, when it flashes uh -huh. up with the characters. Even now, on like yesterday on Twitter, I see people debating whether that actually matters all that much or not. Um, really? And yet, like, it's like, we still don't really know exactly, like, what everything does. Um, so that that part of it annoys me. Um, but, you know, it's not that difficult. Like, it takes a few minutes to sit and go through and try out some different part, like, supporters, if you're looking yeah. through your list to try and find the optimal one. And then what I usually right. do is you only kind of get the one really good attempt where you're using the optimal connectors. And then I just kind of spam through the rest of the attempts and I make sure to yeah. pick people who are from my friends list. So you get those extra few chain battle rewards because somebody used your supporters. So um, mm. I try and go through those. But yeah, it's definitely not a mode. As long as I can secure top 1%, I don't care about like, you know, using stones to reset it and be like, oh, can I get an even higher score? It's like, nah, if I've got my top 1%, I'm good. Um, <laughs> so I won't be touching it until after the reset tomorrow where I have one more strong attempt to break it but yeah I don't, honestly uh, not something i want to use stones on <laughs> yeah i feel i don't know i feel like for me as long as i get all the dragon stones, i'm like i'm good i'm out bro it's not that big of a deal for me personally yeah um the difference know, yeah no go ahead what you guys i was just gonna say the difference in rewards between top one percent and top two to three isn't that much anyway um, yeah. I don't know what the differences are as you go lower down the table, but um, it doesn't make yeah. the biggest of like, there are a couple of chain battles since it came out where I've only finished in the top two to 3%. And some of those are the ones that are the really, really annoying ones where you have to have like the perfect friend set up. And for those, I just, yeah. I, I, get, I just get to a certain point and I just stop caring. Like <laughs> the difference in rewards between right. the top tier and the second tier are just not enough for me to really care all that much. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, make I the, I like, gone. No, I was just going to say the only, I don't know, the only thing for me is I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just because I play the game a lot, but I feel like, because the whole point of Chain Battle, right, is to get the, 
what are those things called? The the like um red and blue oh, like medallion um, things. Um oh my god. They're like chain battle memories of, or something. I don't know. I need to look yeah, that. No, I that's battlefield think memories. Of the uh, emblem name. of cooperation, they're called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a great name. I know, right? And then the super top oh. tier ones are the emblem of unity, the ones that you get at the end for like the higher rewards unity. so you can open those chests. Because I know those ones you get at the very end, uh, for your bracket that you finish in you do get the same amount for top one as you do for top two to three so um i don't know if you let me check what the ones are for the next one down but yeah i, I don't because i feel like at least for me who's been playing the game for a while because the whole point of those is to get equipment from them right mm -hmm. like you open the chest and you get equipment yep i don't know maybe it's just because i play the game a lot and now we have like a lot of other um they have a lot of other like events and stuff that give you equipment, uh -huh. but I feel like I just never really like, like, of course I'll do chain battle, like, you know, and then get a couple medals and whatever. Um, and then like have some to use on the chest, but I feel like I'm never really like, Oh no, I don't have an equipment to put on this unit. Oh, know? trust me. I, I, <laughs> I, I am in, I am down bad for good silver skill orbs. Really? I'll tell you that. Yep. Interesting. For the, well, for the really good ones, right? Cause there are units. If I, if we get like a sub easy a or something like that, that comes out and they're a bit mid, um, I maybe won't put any on them at all. If they're ones That's that fair. I think I might use sometimes I'll put like the not good ones where it's like level two of something or like level two right. and level one of something i do things. that too yeah but for the top tier ones i obviously try and give those to the better characters but then of course you guys know me i make sure all of my heroes units are decked out yes. in the best possible <laughs> skill orbs so uh, i have probably put a lot of them into units that i maybe shouldn't have early on um, but yeah i got the list up here so just to confirm if as long as you finish in the top five percent you get okay. the same amount of those uh, Emblem of Unity, which is the really good ones. You do get a few extra of the lower ones um, by finishing in the higher tiers. But those ones that are probably like the main goal ones that you want to get, you get the same amount uh, for finishing in the four to five bracket as you do for the top one. So if you're in the four to five, you still get basically all the best stuff. And then you just get a couple less Elder Kai's. I think you get like one or two less stickers, which most people oh, don't no. care about anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, top 5% is probably, I guess, the benchmark you want to aim for if you can't get to uh, top five, but oh, sorry, top one, but... But yeah, I mean, overall, this one wasn't super bad. I thought it was kind of funny yeah. that the um, extreme right. class team is all freezers again, because obviously it works based around <laughs> units sharing links. Yeah. So I think we've had at least three chain battles now, or at least three, where the best extreme team is just all freezers. <laughs> so <laughs> uh... well, I think, well, it doesn't help, too, that like what they've been doing kind of right is that they have really, really been prioritizing the the super uh, the superhero is not correct the uh he, uh super class there we go that's what i was trying to say mm -hmm. the super class characters right because for the i feel like it's been the last couple of chain battles or at least like a few that have happened recently there haven't been um any boost units or at least any like red boost units because you know how like when you're selecting your units they either have yeah, the, like, yeah, blue the red glow sparkies. or they have the red glow yeah, yeah. and obviously <laughs> the red is like the the better ones that you're supposed to take from mm -hmm. um i feel like they'll at least if not like the last couple of chain battles consecutively at least like a lot of them recently i feel like have not had any of like the red sparkles on any of the villain characters just so weird because i would think like they would want to make it have that like I, I understand that the whole point is it's supposed to be like themed to the chain battle boss right like obviously a lot of the characters this time were um you know like characters that were like fighting goku black and samasu so that was a lot of the characters that were like boosted this time mm -hmm. um but i don't know i feel like they should just say like who cares and just make the villains have some kind of buff anyway wait wait no. wait are you, are you trying to say that dokon hasn't been doing well with the extreme <laughs> side of the it, nah that's dude. nah dude what <laughs> they never do you that what are you talking about uh, what even even chain even in chain battle, battle. villains don't villains. get no respect <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> oh my goodness we've uncovered oh, it boys man. even in chain <laughs> battle the extreme class bias is real so <laughs> no but who who on the dev team hates extreme characters from? i, know, I just right? want to know 
Somebody on the dev team gotta be hating those villains, bro. I don't know. I know right? It's, Omatsu was bullied in school by a kid in a freezer t-shirt, and he was just like, "I hate all villains from now on, forever." And I make it my life duty to run them into the ground. <laughs> bro, how like uh, you know on Halloween he was wearing a freezer costume, and he was wearing the Goku costume when he got beat up. He was like, "No, Frieza, never again." No, he went. To, he got. He just got hired by Akatsuki, and at the office Christmas party, he was dressed as Goku, and then some guy dressed as Frieza stole the girl he was trying to chat up so from then on he was like right that's it like, from now on the downfall of extreme <laughs> no, no shout out to extreme. shout out to Amatsu <laughs> but, oh that's so funny bro has been getting so much flack on twitter yeah oh my gosh, i think dude. when i i mentioned it in some of the replies because obviously i mean it's social media right people always get out of pocket like well some right. people always do it's right there's always a, per, a percentage well, of the community you know? that get out of hand but i do yeah. feel like some people i know he is like the head producer but i feel like some people feel like he literally designs everything um <laughs> which he does not right so like no. if the team come to him and they're like this is what we've designed and we've you know well they don't test it we assume because of some of the things that get into the game but this is the stuff that we've designed for this particular theme i mean i wouldn't be surprised i've I've worked with various different types of managers over the years he probably just looks over it to make sure it doesn't go against any of the stuff that they're not supposed to be doing and then just goes okay cool like that looks fine right and then i'm sure he doesn't literally pick like i'm sure the team didn't come to him and be like look uh amatsu san we've made the ultimate carnival (laughs) lr goku black for part two and then he went no future gohan like i'm pretty sure it doesn't work like that right but some people act like it does so uh <laughs> could you imagine like they bring it to him on a whiteboard he just grabs the eraser off his desk and just smears it across no no goku black like oh man because you know it's the same type of thing right we're like it's the person who is like the head of a company that represents the company and people like blame them yep. for the issues, right? It's mm-hmm. the same thing as like the Zuck for Facebook, right? I guess we met <laughs> at this point. Or like Elon, right? With like Tesla and Twitter, right? Or something like that. Or like Jeff Bezos, you know, for Amazon or whatever, even though he doesn't even work for the company any, or he's yeah. not the CEO rather anymore. But, you know, it's the same type of thing, right? Like with all these big companies, like the person who's the face of the company, mm-hmm. people always target their like distaste i guess you know towards like that to yeah. the person to, the to court, a certain extent like, it makes sense right because they are the public face of the company right. that most people see right so that's kind of the only right. person in their mind that they can direct their like disappointment towards i guess but yeah right. the meeting of the the meme meeting where the guy someone gets makes a suggestion and gets thrown out the window that's uh that's a good <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> like Do hey you know there's a word for that Getting thrown out a yep, window. Yep, I do actually. Defenestration. Defenestration. Yeah. Yep. Look at yep. that. There's your word of the day, everyone. In the <laughs> see, don't don't say that the, the, the slot one super podcast is not educational. All right. So defenestration is the art of being thrown out of a window. So if That's you right. defenestrate something, you throw it out of a window. So there you go. There's your right. there's your word of the day. We turned well, into uh, Dokkan Battle Sesame Street over here. But um... that, that <laughs> English is such a funny language. We have a word know. for throwing someone out a window, but we don't have a word for the day before yesterday. We just say the day before yesterday. Thank you, English. Very cool. Oh, that's like, true. Mind blown. <laughs> you mean yes? You mean you mean yesterday's yesterday? <laughs> You are yesterday, yesterday. That's right. I, I guess we just coined it now. Yo, hit Let's us up. Go. Right, come on. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> ah, good times. We do have fun. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Make sure you hit that like button. Um, so, we will go ahead and move on to our next big segment here. Uh, which of course is the trash takes segment. We know you guys oh, yes. uh, always appreciate this one. Uh, we get some takes from you guys in the community for this week for us to discuss. Um, and as we said at the beginning of the show, we got one uh, this week that has a uh, got a lot of attention <laughs> from a lot of people, obviously, you know, primarily because of who it came from, I guess. So we'll bring that up on the screen here now. Mm-hmm. And this is a take from our boy, the truth DT. Um, and it says here in the current environment of difficult fights, crit is almost entirely worthless. Now, (laughs) now, of course, some of you might be saying, well, of course, the guy who goes on and on about dodge all the time would say (laughs) something like this. However, uh, we do obviously always try and give people the opportunity, uh, when we do these sections, as we always say on every episode, I feel like it's worth mentioning. This is supposed to just be for fun. I feel like a big fun thing in the community is discussing like hot takes, 
Um, so we don't encourage any harassment or anything like that for anyone featured in this segment. They all go along with allowing their takes to be used on the episode. And we do actually have a clip from Truth to explain the take a little oh, yeah. bit more because um, I did see some replies even in the original thread of um, people he kind of had to clarify what he meant a little bit. So we did get a audio clip from him and uh, we are going to go ahead and play that now. Well, first off, I consider myself a friend and an ally, a compatriot of the Slot One podcast. So of course I word it in a particular way to get maximum visibility to the original tweet. But what I'm more so referring to is hidden potential system. Um, really many characters these days, let's take LR Future Gohan as an example, has multiple built-in additional attacks, he has a way to do guaranteed crits, he is a character that while he can be very strong defensively, it's very easy to penetrate his defenses, especially in the hardest fight in the game, which I do think it's important to kind of give extra credence towards evaluating characters in the hardest fight in the game. So, you know, that red zone fusions and loss will do his AoE. He's doing damage to a rainbowed link level 10, you know, defensive equip LR future Gohan. Giving yourself dodge, or not even necessarily dodge, but building characters towards a little bit more defense-oriented, I feel like will go a long way in these fights. Many characters could do seven consecutive super attacks that do guaranteed crits, and the boss will still be alive, and then the boss will one-shot you, and you lose the fight. Um, you want to try and build your characters, many of them, I would argue, balancing them out. Path to Power Kid Goku's a great example. Additionals, crits built in, give him dodge or give him raw defense, help him out a little bit. That's the number one thing is focus on balance, but then I would almost gear more towards defense as well. As time goes on, these bosses get stronger and stronger and stronger. Look at characters from 2020 that are still viable. Tech Ultimate Gohan, PyCon, Janemba. Look at the types of abilities they are, the type of characters they are. It's very clear that defense is better than offense, out ages offense. It will always be this way and always has been this way. So I think it's smart to not overwhelm yourself with the damage, damage, damage mentality and adapt and move forward from the 2016 mindset of crit, 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 crit. Okay, so that was Truth's take on the matter. We also have a clip from our boy who was missing in action today, Mr. Minato's Flash. Um, our boy is actually going to give us a bit of a response that he recorded for us as his little cameo for today's episode. So, Mr. Minato's Flash, take it away. All right, gamers, this is me, Natos Flash, the one and only. And again, I want to say I'm sorry that I could not make it live, but I do want to go ahead and give my input still as one of the hosts. Now, this point is very funny from Mr. The Truth DT, this guy right here. Oh, my goodness. Like, <laughs> I, the tweet reads differently than obviously what the, uh, the explanation is. That's why we ask for these explanations, right? Because uh, there could be a lot more than the actual, like, take itself that expands upon it, right? So, like, if you're reading the tweet itself, saying that crit is almost entirely worthless, I would uh, say it's not that far. Like, I would... More so in line, agree with what Truth said in the actual recorded section where you want to balance your units out. I think that is a smarter way to build your units. I also do personally believe that defense is a better tool than offense. Defense clearly does age better than offensive units, like in terms of the architect of how the units are built. So if you have your character like, let's say, Path the Power Kid Goku, right? Path the Power Kid Goku. I bought him full dodge when he first came out, and this boy has, you know, consistently, like, well, not consistently, right, you know, because it's, it's like a chance to dodge, right, but I, I mean, you know, I'm gonna say it, consistently, this boy has been dodging some of these, like, major attacks that at this point, you know, these bosses are doing 700k normals, 500k AoEs turn one, you know, even STR Sin does, like, a uh, type disadvantage, like, 700k AoEs or whatever the damage is, right, more than, like, 600k, but, um... 
Esther Kidgoku, uh, no, Path Power Kidgoku having that dodge ability and the hidden potential is so good compared to giving him this extra crit when he already has like 30 crit that he can get and he has the built-in additional so he doesn't, and it's a physical type, so he doesn't really need a lot of extra additional to get that extra additional proc. So it's like, is there really like as big of a deal? Because so many of these units nowadays also do. They like had built in crit and additional in their kit. That's just how unit power creep has gone. I mean, what's when's the last unit that has come out that don't have either additionals or crit built into all right, I hit my mic and I think I disconnected it, but we're, we're back. But when's the last time you've seen a character that doesn't have like additionals or crit built into their passive like that, right? Like already have offensive setups built into them. And while I do think that, you know, let's say for a unit like Sword of Hope Trunks, you could argue they're an offensive unit. I want to build them offensively. I think that's perfectly fine. But it, I don't think that it's a bad thing to say I want to build them defensively as well. And you could say... Look, in 10 months from now, Sword of Hope Trunks, me giving him a full dodge build actually ended up working out. Like, dodge and then crits. Because, like, he already has, like, what, four additionals that he does. So, it's like, he's very likely to get an extra additional anyways. So, like, what's... you Giving him, like, crit and dodge would balance him out. Because he doesn't have any crit, he doesn't have any evasion. And the additionals eat off from each other all already, right? But it's, it's all situational because you could say, you know, oh, the additionals with that unit, you want the damage reduction, right? So it's very fair. Um, but that's just my point, my take on it. I think that I would say this is not a trash take. I know a lot of people would be like, I love my crit. And I think that's fair if you think that's a trash take. But I personally agree with the uh, statements that Truth has made and the extended um, like recording of it. But that's my part. Okay, I believe Mr. Minato's Flash has said his piece here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen in the chat, let us know what you think. I've seen a bunch of you already speak in your mind yep. in terms of how you feel about this one. Yep. This is a very interesting take, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like... The thing is, I feel like it's kind of interesting because I feel like the actual like text for the tweet isn't as much of like the the full explanation of the tweet i guess because obviously what seems to like kind of be meant a little bit more um is more so like you know obviously maybe more of a balance is like a, t a good thing um mm -hmm. obviously right with with just saying that crit is almost entirely <laughs> worthless right that's a little bit overzealous i feel like right like yep. I understand the point because obviously I don't think that saying dodge or dodge, I'm sorry, defense rather, excuse me, is necessarily like better. I don't think that that's necessarily wrong. I mean, obviously with a lot of these different fights, right? Like mm -hmm. if you don't survive, you're not going to win. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, right, especially with um, it's Zamasu, right? The red zone Zamasu, the new fight. If you don't do enough damage to him, you just do zero. Yep. <laughs> right? Like, you just do nothing. So, I think in that regard, right, obviously, crit is still really valu valuable, excuse me, because for a lot of these characters, if you're not hitting crits, especially on a fight like that, you're not even going to be doing any damage at all. Like, you're just going to be doing zero. And obviously, you need to take out the enemy, um, you know, in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it is also a little bit, like, in that regard, speaking on Zamasu, too. Maybe it is also a little bit more stage dependent, whether you give them, yeah. like, a little bit more dodge or a little bit more crit, right? Depending on what boss you're fighting obviously it's not that easy right to just like say that because of course you know like not everybody has the luxury of you know just changing out their equipment for like every new fight that they do um i do i think though just to add but, on to that point yeah, i think the so inclusion of ex skill orbs is kind of good for that right like if you have a balance in your units hidden potential from their actual like the bottom uh, right and top left and then you're giving them like for example you could have a unit that you give them all crit like ex skill orbs but then for another event you could change those all to like dodge ex skill orbs which is a minor change that you could make but yeah i do get that in general it's very difficult to just change yeah. a build for the fight but yeah go on right exactly no i i 100 agree with you that's why ironically enough that earlier in the podcast we were talking about um 
you know using equipment right i try to tend to lean more towards the ex ones that you can like use infinitely because then that way i could change it out if i need to um i think that definitely right i think it's fair to say that obviously um a more like even build i think is definitely not a bad thing i mean obviously it would be great if every unit under the sun could do it all, right? If every <laughs> unit could crit an additional yep. and dodge and, you know, be defensive and also be offensive and, you know, like, revive and everything under the sun. But, um, obviously, right, different units had different purposes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think saying crits for every single unit is worthless is definitely just, like, not necessarily yeah. true. Yeah, and I think that's why we, obviously, as I said before, like, that's why we try to get the um, clarification, like, from the people that make the takes, because obviously sometimes just the way they're worded, they can be taken a certain way. I think we discussed this because we had a take on one of the previous episodes that was about dodge being pointless, right? Um, uh -huh. And there are a lot of different mindsets about, you know, how you want to build your units, whether you want to play to their strengths completely and just, you know, their weaknesses are their weaknesses and it is what it is. Um, or you want to use your hidden potential to try and shore up those weaknesses as much as you can. Um, so like, for example, um, I mean, sure, I'm sure even truth would agree, right? There's certain units like, uh, I'd have to double check what his build is. Maybe I am actually wrong, but units like STR LR cooler, like if you're not uh, building him full crit then i'm not sure like what you're doing um <laughs> like building him full dodge just to maybe get some dodges on the attack that would kill him if he doesn't get a bunch of additional supers feels like a waste to me but obviously yeah. i guess the main angle because you gotta remember he does clarify in that you know explanation that he provided for us um the fact that the um he obviously got, looks at his hidden potential from the mindset of doing no item runs on everything. Right. So obviously if you're somebody who does not care about that at all, then <laughs> obviously me, you don't baby. need to worry about full dodge. Cause if you have a crazy damage dealing unit, like for example, the new sort of hope trunks, you're going to just want to give him all crits and additionals. And then on a turn where he potentially could get caught, you're just going to use an item. Right. So there yeah. are different mindsets uh, going into it. Um, because yeah crit is obviously very useful in certain situations um but he's obviously clarifying that specifically about the hidden potential now i will say something that minato did touch on a little bit in his clip as well um going back to kind of like what you said about the zamasu fight um there are definitely going to be instances and i've seen screenshots i think someone posted some screenshots in replies to truth's actual comment on our post but um there are instances where like a unit doesn't get a crit and maybe they do like two or three supers and none of them crit and then the boss survives with like the tiniest sliver of health and True. then they super attack you and you die now, obviously, you could argue, well, if you had full dodge, you could dodge that super attack and not die. But if they had a bunch of crits and they actually got a crit on one of those three supers, then right. you would have killed them. And then you progress on to the next phase. So I think um, there is a lot of tear between the people who are like full offense and then the people that are full defense. But I feel like the... I guess the sweet spot, if you want to call it that, is probably still somewhere in the middle because it's like your units need to survive long enough for you to get off all the attacks that you need to do to kill the boss. But you also need to kill the boss, right? Like if you're bringing a team that is very strong defensively, but it means you're going to take twice as many turns to beat the event, um, depending on your team build, that means you just have more possibilities of the wrong unit eating a super and then you die and you've just spent like five turns doing very little damage but your defensive units were taking all the flak and then the wrong unit takes a super on like turn seven and then the whole fight is then over so i think there definitely are um nuances for these builds especially for certain characters because like if you have a unit that has built in like 70 percent chance to dodge and then gets like a bunch of guaranteed additional supers but they have no crit or hidden potential in their um Oh, sorry no crit or super effective in their kit then obviously crit seems like a good option to give them right so i think yeah. there definitely are situations where it is beneficial so um but yeah i mean i get like the perspective of where it's coming from um people in the chat uh let's check the poll so about half the people in the chat have voted on the poll so if you want to get your vote in at the last minute here if it, it may change it's actually a lot closer now 
than it was within the first few minutes that the poll went up. So we always post a poll when we put up these takes just to see what the chat is thinking. Obviously, if you're watching the VOD or you're listening to this on Spotify, um, you won't be able to have taken part. But hey, try and come out to the episodes live and you can uh, take part in this sure. segment as well. But at the start, W take was actually way ahead. It was like 70 something percent. Um, but currently we are at 54 percent w take and then l is at 50 uh, 40 and now it's actually changing again it's now dropping a lot closer to 50 50 as some more votes are coming in so the community uh torn over offense versus defense and yeah the people <laughs> watching live with the poll torn over whether this is a w or an l take as well so definitely very interesting uh thanks to truth obviously for taking part he did mm -hmm. give us a little bit of a shout out in the comment as well um he knows what he's doing with his twitter game this guy because i think this uh <laughs> his post is this reply got i think like 65 replies or something um which wow. i think is more than the last like last week's one where we put out the tweet asking for trash takes in general um we got a bunch of good ones for last week um but i think that one reply had so many replies in fact my favorite one was just the one that said someone who very clearly didn't agree with uh truth and it just said works cited and it was a picture of a crack pipe so i thought that was uh i thought that one was pretty funny but again oh I feel, again i feel like a lot of that is people misinterpreting obviously by putting such a short sentence like this you obviously can read this as even units that have like built-in crits getting crits yeah. is pointless yeah. which obviously is not exactly what he meant so shout out to right. truth uh, for that one um and so we do have like i said we have a second one for today so obviously there was we had a quite nice long discussion about the uh, end of the worldwide the ex part the sink all that kind of stuff but we knew there wasn't a lot of stuff going on in the game and as i said at the beginning we didn't want to sort of show favoritism to our friends and colleagues by just picking like truce one right and then not giving any of the people who had submitted a take for us uh, the chance to get theirs on the show so we did pick right. a second one to talk about uh, now as well so i'm just going to end the poll here uh, ended up at 53 percent for w take so it was very very close um, but now we're going to move on to the second one here. So this will come up on the screen now. Uh, shout out to uh, Yatin Sharma. Hopefully I didn't horribly butcher the pronunciation of your name. Um, but shout out to you. Um, so he has given us a take here. There is a disconnect between content creators, Truth, Minato, etc. Look at Minato getting the shout out. He's not even here today. <laughs> Outrageous. Um, uh... himself, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're about to lay it. No, no, don't worry. Renato's got a response for this as well. But um, so there's a disconnect between content creators and the community on how certain units perform because people have those units at various hidden potential and not rainbow like creators. A single video of a unit at 55% isn't enough to gauge its performance at single dude like at 55 percent because this is obviously referring to um truth minato i do it toon does it i think as well um a lot of people will obviously do a 55 percent showcase of a new unit but mm -hmm. for some of these guys especially it will be that one video of them at 55 percent and then as soon as they've done that video um they feed in the, their dupes and then the rest of the videos they do is going to be you know with multiple dupes or rainbow if it's like truth for example um so just like last time uh we're gonna play minato's response first uh just so we don't you know kind of accidentally go off and just mention every single thing he's gonna say so we'll uh play this out for you guys now and then we will chime in afterwards so here we go so with this take i think it's a little interesting because there is some truth to it where it's a situation like let's say someone gets like 79 percent on a unit as a content creator and shows off the unit shows there's abilities stuff like that or like instantly gets so to max level 10 links and then you're like okay um like as a content creator you're feeling different for using the unit compared to using a character that is obviously 55% link level one, no equips, right? And you're like, I just pulled a unit. I want to use them and try them out. I don't have time to link level. Maybe you do have time. It's like still like link level, like five, four or so. But um, that it is situational. And I would say it, it also depends on the creator sometimes. Like sometimes I, you know, just get 55% one copy of unit. I'm like, I'm good. I showcase the unit off like that. Maybe I, 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 I usually try to get max links and stuff like that myself. But, um, 
that's why a, a lot of creators you know like i know me truth and Yin do it for sure at the top of my head you, even toon rami another example right a lot of us do do the 55 percent showcases so we can get a good idea of how they look like at 55 percent but um you could argue that there is a sort of disconnect about that but i would say at the end of the day the design of the unit is still going to be essentially the same and while dupes could definitely help a unit out it's not going to be the difference between you know a unit actually being good and usable and a unit not being good and usable right um maybe, maybe there's some scenarios where hp isn't as high so you can't eat some of these like really damaging super attacks like if i have a full rainbow box and then i have like you know future gohan's leader and i have like 800k hp well as a free to play player with a lot of you know 55 percent units have like 600k hp 650k and then like a 400k damage super attack is a lot more devastating to them than it would be to me right so i kind of see that situation but um at the end of the day the showcases are you know that's not really something i could like control my luck i guess right so at the end of the day um i guess we just show off what we have and i guess you also have to consider that in mind but that's why we do deal those 55 percent units and i would say a single video of a 55 percent unit is good enough especially if you're taking them into multiple different events right um which i try to do sometimes but a lot of the times you only really need to use the unit once at 55 percent to gauge what their performance would be in typical content is but that's it for me Okay, so that was Minato's take on the subject. Let us see what the chat is saying here. It seems like in terms of our poll here, right? Um, we are a little bit 50-50, actually, which is quite interesting to see. Um, in terms of myself, right? This is a very interesting one because obviously, um, you know, of course, this is specifically talking about how units perform. Um... It's kind of it's kind of an interesting one for me because for me personally, right? Like I'm by no means a whale or anything like that, right? I I do my best to obviously like try and get every like big boy unit and mm -hmm. if there's a unit that I really enjoy yep. um or something like that, right? Of course, um I'm going to be, you know, trying to get them in my box. Um now that being said, obviously I am not going for rainbow um on any of my units and stuff like that and i think to be fair like this take is kind of trying to imply right like most people probably aren't going for rainbow right it's yep. mostly just whales who are um you know summoning like crazy and getting these, getting these units to max and all that type of stuff um i feel like saying that there's a disconnect is a little bit like strong of a word to use for that um, I kind of understand what this person is saying, right? But the other thing is, too, like, I understand that, obviously, when it comes to you using the unit, you're going to be using them more so at, like, lower percentages with lower dupes. Um, but at the same time, like, if you have the unit, could you also not use a rainbow friend and test it that way? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that's something else to consider. What, what were you going to say regarding that? Yeah, so obviously Minato mentioned in his clip uh, the fact that, you know, there's a couple of us that do these 55% showcases. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for it, right? So um, I think that the 55% showcases are worth doing because for a lot of people, especially if you are free to play or you're somebody who doesn't spend a lot of money on the game, 55% um, is all you're going to get, right, from the first banner. Unless you get really lucky or you decide to, like, keep summoning because it's one of your favorite characters or it's the anniversary or something like, like a big event that you've saved up your stones for, then a lot of people are going to be having these units at 55%, at least until the next time they come back on a banner that you summon on. Um, so I think 55% showcases are worth doing to show what the unit is like at 55%. Some of the feedback that I've gotten has been that so a lot of people will actually wait for the 55% showcases to come out before they even decide to summon because they are going to be one of those people that's in that boat where if they do manage to pull the unit, then they're just, they're going to stop summoning. So unless they get like, you know, 
the the super lucky double unit pool multi. They're just going to have mm-hmm. one copy. Now, when it says about the thing that I I think I do disagree with, and why if I had to vote, I mean, there's nuance, right? Again, I'm not uh, I'm not saying this guy is an L, but the I would say I would vote L take because the main part of it is where he says a single video of a unit of 55 percent isn't enough to gauge their performance. I disagree because the way I try to do my 55 percent showcases and the reason why I see them as having value is because it's the numbers that you get to see right so if you only do one 55 percent showcase video you're obviously not putting them in 10 different events which i think is probably what this person is kind of alluding to a bit more but the difference is right yeah your team build might be slightly different for a different event but you're seeing how that unit performs so if you see that at 55 percent, this is the attack stat that they're putting out and this is their defense that's what it's going to be in all of those other events as well. So that information is obviously still useful to have. So even if we're going into an event that's not as difficult, like let's say we take on an older red zone stage, I like to do my 55% showcases on either the red zone perfect cell or the freezer because they're ones that are quite long. You get to see multiple turns. Um, You know, those events are nowhere near as hard as the newer events that are coming out, but you're able to see the numbers of how they're performing so if you can see that okay this unit is getting up to like let's say 300k defense and so they're taking damage from normals from full power freezer after he's super attacked then you kind of know that's like okay well if i take this unit into fusion zamasu at 55 percent he's going to get rocked, right? Because the, you've seen how well he does in a lower difficulty event, right? Yeah. So I feel like the 55% showcases are useful for that. Um, but also the thing for me is, I like you, I mean, shout out to Toon, calls me a whale all the time. Um, but like... I don't get to whale out all the time, right? Like, for example, mm-hmm. one unit that's a really big example for me was um, Path to Power Kid Goku. I only managed mm. to pull one copy of him, and I could not, like, afford at that time to just go in on his banner and try and get more dupes. So I had right. to put up with having him at 55% until he came back on a banner for Global for the first time. So every mm. video I did with him in all the different events, every time I threw him on a new team for a new unit that had come out, like... Um, world tournament goku he was at 55 percent. so i'm i know it's not consistent right like not everyone is out there doing 55 percent videos in multiple different stages for every single unit but i do feel like you know this kind of i guess again it comes down to the nuance of the wording of the take um and i should mention as well uh, to give the guy another shout out i did try and get hold of him for a comment but by the time we'd gone live i hadn't received one so obviously he could have expanded on it a little bit but it does kind of imply as you touched on that it's like all creators it's just like oh yeah Mm -hmm. we don't have these units rainbow like creators do it's like well not all of us do right like some of us can't rainbow our units on day one so um it's interesting to see what these units do at different levels um a lot of the time though i will do kind of what i said right where i'll record my 55 percent showcase and then if i pulled even one extra dupe then i'll feed it in straight away and then i'll take them into the harder events because obviously i want to see them at their best that i can have them um right but yeah i think the 55 percent showcase i don't think anyone would argue that they don't have value i guess the main point of the take is saying that just one video of them at 55 percent isn't enough um but i feel like there's a lot of variation out there i know minato often tries to get his units to full link level 10 before he does the 55 percent showcase yeah. which i don't do mm-hmm. so mine are 55 percent full level one so you get to see them how they are freshly pulled and obviously for some units especially extreme units that have big bad bosses that means you're not actually getting their full potential because you're not going to have big bad bosses active um some of the time so Right. It's very interesting. Um, I think it's an interesting take overall, right? I feel like there is a lot of nuance there. Uh, maybe if we had gotten a further explanation, um, there might have been a few different um, aspects that he was coming from that we could have discussed. But um, was there anything else you wanted to add to that uh, before we move on? I'll, see what the, I'll have a look at the poll while you... Uh, um, let me look here. I mean, I don't really think so. I mean, I think the only thing is, right, like, I, I do, I can kind of understand definitely, like, a, maybe one video isn't enough, because, I mean, you gotta also think, like, obviously, with bringing the unit into different scenarios and different events, like you said, you do kind of try and vary it up in terms of, like, some of the events that you bring them to, like, 
And I know for certain other creators too, they also like bring them into multiple different kinds of events in one video. Um, but I kind of, I feel like what maybe more they're trying to say, again, it's unfortunate that we didn't get like a, an audio clip from this person, but I almost kind of feel like more so what they mean is that like, you know how obviously when you pull a unit, right? If you're just pulling them at you 55% and you have them at 55% until they inevitably come back right on a banner and then maybe you get a dupe of them, right? That means that that entire time that you've been using them at 55% and that's how you understand that they perform, right? Now, you could also say the same thing if you happen to pull a dupe, like say, you know, with uh, Vegito Blue, let's just use him for an example since he's new, right? If I pulled Vegito Blue and I pulled a dupe with Vegito Blue, right? My basically like only experience with using the unit for like quite literally months until the unit returns would be him at 69%, right? Um, and obviously that would be for the entirety until I end up getting more dupes in him. Maybe not even the Bennett he comes back because obviously maybe I don't pull a dupe of him or something like that. And lo and behold, maybe I don't even have him rainbowed until, you know, like there's content that far exceeds his power level and he's already, you know, like not even usable on there, even mm -hmm. a rainbow or something like that. I really hope that day doesn't come. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> um, you know, you understand my point, right? It's like, it's obviously the fact that um, you know, people are using these units for like this a long time, but obviously for people who, you know, are kind of being referenced in this tweet more so, you know, it's kind of like, oh, okay, they're using it at Rainbow, so that's kind of the perspective that they have for all this time. So I guess from that perspective, I definitely understand. Um, I will say that's why I think it's also, um, you know, it's also nice when I've seen people, um, you know, I, I know this is kind of ironic, not to, like, bring up private servers to start any kind of debate, but I do like it Ooh. when private servers... True I know, senses I know, are going off, he's going to be in the chat any second. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, private servers, sometimes I've seen some or used some, because obviously I've been, like, around the block testing them out to see, you know, like, which ones are cool or whatever. Like, if they have some custom content, that's always fun to play. But it's nice when private servers have a 55 version of a unit or like a 69 version of the unit or 79 or whatever because sometimes they do sometimes they have versions of the unit that aren't just rainbow and i will say in that regard that is always very nice to um try that out right i think it's always cool to be able to um you know kind of give the unit a test at those different things because obviously you know if you don't pull the unit at a like or if you pull the unit like i was saying before right in terms of like getting a dupe you'll never try them out at 55 percent, unless obviously you do it on purpose right where you don't um add it in right you don't add in the dupe on purpose so but yeah so i don't know i think um just in terms of that right i think that this is a bit of a uh a w and an l in my opinion i guess i think it's like i'm kind of a little bit neutral yeah it definitely like i say it definitely has nuance to it i could see multiple ways of looking at it right to uh but yeah, I mean, there definitely are. I know, like, Truth himself, um, we uh, obviously didn't get a comment from him because it's not his one. Um, but he has said before, and to his credit, I guess, he does say, like, when people say to him, like, oh, you know, what do you think of this unit at 55%? Like, he will just straight up say, like, I don't play the game with 55% units, so I don't, like, speak on them, right? So he does the 55% showcase, and for him, that's it. But obviously, there are a lot of us out there that, you know, don't have all the units rainbow. So there definitely are 55% showcases out there that you guys can check out. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you if you have the unit or you don't, you can always try out friends at the various different hidden potential levels. I know you said about how you can try out a rainbow friend and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there are a few different ways to see them in action. Um, you know, the, the main goal, hopefully, is that units are still good at 55 percent. But as I think somebody yeah. mentioned in the chat, like at the end of the day it is a gacha game. Right. So these units are designed yep. and the new That's hard true. events are designed where they want you to get extra copies of these units because they want you to summon more. But, um, you know, we've seen in the past uh, units that especially come with a lot of the hidden potential abilities built into their kit can still be really, really good at 55%. I think it was when, I think it might have been the sixth Annie when um, UI Goku came out. UI Goku was like the best 55% unit in the game, right? Because he had like 70% uh -huh. chance to dodge, 50% chance to crit on his super attack, 
And then he had a built-in additional in his passive and he's an AGL unit, so he gets level five additional anyway. So at 55%, yep. he could dodge every single attack on the turn, super attack three times, and then all be crits at 55%, which is pretty crazy. And units what like <laughs> Physical God Goku is really good from this year's Saiyan Day. Um, True. So yeah, lots of units have come out that are still very good at 55%, but then I feel like there are a lot of other units that do get huge amounts of benefits from dupes. Like I feel like the new trunks yeah. is one of them. And same with the Mai side Definitely. banner unit. Like the more additionals those units get, the better they are. Um, and so like for Mai, for example, who's STR, so at 55%, she has no additional. Um, it makes her a lot worse overall. So yeah. Um, definitely something to think about so yeah shout out once again to uh yatin sharma again i hope that wasn't a horrible mispronunciation of your name but shout out looks to, you. to me I don't know. <laughs> yeah i don't know right so we'll uh, go back to the cameras i know you guys have probably missed our uh pretty faces but so that is it for the trash take segment shout out to truth and shout out to yatin as well for those takes uh shout out to the chat for everyone who voted as well i should mention that one actually did win w take with the 58 percent so Obviously, a lot of 55% uh, enjoyers in the chat. Um, you know, maybe, like I say, you know, if I don't get lucky with pulling extra copies, I end up doing a few extra 55% showcases as well. But shout out to all you guys uh, in the chat. Um, so, yeah, that is going to wrap up the final scheduled segment for the agenda for this week. So we will move on to taking a look at the uh, super chats for the comments and the shout outs from the okay. duration of the episode. So first of all, uh, shout out to Sol for the five dollar super chat. He Thank says you. units need a chance at each of the three hidden potential mechanics if they are missing it in their kit. But in, in importance, crit is C tier and additional and dodge are S tier for now. So it kind of plays off of truth's take. Um, so we obviously we have kind of talked about the subject a little bit. Um, what do you think about that? Right. So if a unit is missing oh. hidden potential abilities from their base kit, then dodge and additional are more important for the most part, I guess. Right. That's interesting. I mean, I wouldn't say crit is C tier. Like, I feel like that's underplaying it a little bit, but I do understand the point, right? Obviously, um, if the unit can't output damage, then I know that is the opinion of a lot of people in the community right now that they feel like, oh, okay, so if the unit can't do damage, then they got to be defensive to be able to survive, um, you know, in an event. So yep. In that regard, um, I definitely understand that perspective for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, because I think there are a lot of these units. Again, it just comes back to kind of the discussion that we already had, right? Where there are a lot of these units like Mai and like Trunks where getting additional supers or dodges is what helps them to survive against these toughest bosses. But then, of course, the flip side is units like Trunks. If he's getting like three or four supers in a turn, if you're getting right. crits, then you're more likely to kill the boss right before they kill you. So right. obviously that is... Uh, a bit of a split but yeah i think i like to look at it from as going back to the discussion that we've had previously with the um whether you use your hidden potential to strengthen your unit's strengths or cover their weaknesses um i kind of look at it more as going for their strengths um depending on the unit right so if they're hidden potential like trunks for example he has a load of additionals um he's mm -hmm. on the team to do damage so right. I gave mine a decent amount of crit. I did give him some dodge because I'm, you know, I've always been a three dodge enjoyer, mainly because I like, <laughs> the, I think the main reason, we could go into a whole side topic about that, so we won't do that. But I am of the mindset that I like it when my units ha at least have the ability to do everything, even if it's only a small That's ability. Fair. And, you know, level three dodges have saved no item runs for me many times. Um, obviously, it's not consistent. It's a 3% chance. But I'd rather they have a 3% chance than a 0% chance, right? Right. That's so uh, and then units for me, units that have like 50 percent dodge built in, unless they're a support unit who are only there to buff the team with their passive and they're not going to do any damage by themselves. I don't give them any extra dodge because they don't need it. Right. So it right. just all depends. Right. Hidden potential is definitely a very um, subjective thing. And, uh, you know, it's fun to discuss builds and stuff, but obviously always at the end of the day, we all play the game to have fun. If you like to build right. units in a certain way and, you know, you don't find yourself constantly losing every single event, then, <laughs> you know, who cares, right? As long as you have fun. 
Um, that's what right. it's all about. So shout out exactly. to Sol for uh, the super chat. We have another one okay. from Daniel Rodriguez. Not so much of a question, <laughs> more of a comment here straight up. Just donated uh, $2 super chat saying private <laughs> server showcases are meh, in my opinion. Um, you know, go on, what I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. First of all, I, I think at some point, I think it might be fun. Uh, this is something maybe we have to discuss behind the scenes, but I think it might be fun to have a private server discussion episode because mm. I think that could be kind of interesting. If we, if we could get truth on for that one, that would be oh, entertaining man, as that, heck. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be like, oh, you see, and he'll be like, actually, it <laughs> suck. No, that would be a funny episode. No, yeah. but like, for real though, like, um, I definitely understand that, right? Like, I think using private servers just, like, to mess around on Dokkan and obviously be able to try out these units that, like, you might not ever get at Rainbow is fun. And, you know, obviously, like, if a private server has, like, a custom content or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. I always think that that's pretty fun. Yeah. You know, if they have, like, their own events or, you know, like, their own characters or something. Yeah. But for doing a showcase, unless you're, like, absolutely sure that everything is correct in there and, um, you know... I think it kind of depends on how you're going about it, because obviously, if you're somebody who just has every unit rainbowed and every unit link level 10, I don't think there's that much of a difference of using a private server where every unit is rainbow and link level 10, because it's the same thing at that point. However, though, like, if you're using characters that have, like, a custom easy A, or you're using, like, you know, like a custom unit or something like that, um... And then you're, like, trying to showcase a normal Dokkan unit yeah. with that. Then, like, I don't know. That's a little, that's a little dicey. Yeah. Like, I saw a couple, of, a couple of clips on Twitter before of people being like, oh, this unit stinks. Or, like, oh, this unit's so good. And then, like, I, I remember I quote retweeted at one time. It was, like, the free-to-play legends Goku Black was on their team. And I'm like, come on, man. What? Yeah, it's like, if everything's above board, right, and you're just using all the units in the game as they are in the real game, then I don't see how it makes much of a difference, right? Like, people right. use the private server to do early showcases after the data downloads. People will use them to try out units. I mean, the thing is, it's good for players and creators in a certain aspect, because if you're somebody that wants to make videos, like showing off the new units, having fun in new events with them, and you don't pull them then your only other option as a content creator is spend more money, right? right? Which um, the private servers can be very useful for that. I think they're very useful for other for, for, for players to be able to mess around with characters. Um, yeah. But, you know, you like you said, you kind of have to know that they are set up exactly the way they should be because right. I know there was an older... I don't know which private server it was. I know it's not the one that I have access to at the moment. But there was, back in the day, and I think it was the one people were using for the um, early showcases because it was the only one that was available. But it was one where, like, every single unit in the Hidden Potential had 20 additional 20 quit crit and 20 dodge. So if you're doing <laughs> yeah, a rainbow showcase for that unit, like, you can't do that in the actual game, right? But, I mean, you can still still see the numbers and stuff like the attack <laughs> like stats and things like that but then yeah when they're getting a turn where they're doing like three supers that are all crits and then they dodge everything it's like yeah the actual rainbow unit is probably not going to do that but you do at least get like to see brother, no cop, you do no, get I to see i think it just goes back to what i said about the 55 percent videos is you get to see the numbers that they do so as long as the units are yeah correct right like and you're not running some random custom support unit that gives all allies 300 percent attack and defense right then uh, <laughs> yeah. you still get to see how they look so um yeah. i do think um you know there's all the arguments about like some people will play the private server instead of playing the actual game and spending money which is bad technically for the overall future but i will say i do think truth goes a little bit too hard in the paint on uh, yeah. private <laughs> servers but yeah like i said in the chat if you want to see truth on a future potential private server discussion episode who That'd knows if cool. we can make it happen but hey let them know that that's something you want to see um, don't obviously, yeah. you know, bug him like crazy. But, you know, if he starts to see a few tweets pop up in the timeline saying, hey, you should go on the Slot 1 Super podcast and talk about private servers, then who knows, right? Maybe we can make it happen. So uh, shout out to yeah. Daniel Rodriguez for that super chat. And then last but not least, we have our boy Raudo Kuhn with the $5 super chat. Thank you. He says, people need to enjoy and play the game however you wish to play it, not because it is dictated by someone else, which, I mean, Amen. I couldn't agree more, right? I pretty much said as much in that previous segment. Um, I think that is what it comes down to, right? Like, at the end of the day, 
it's fun to discuss the game. It's fun to sometimes even have arguments about the game as long as they're all in, you know, good <laughs> good fun. Um, you know, it's kind of like the trash take segment itself, right? It's fun to uh, have a laugh and mess around and joke about takes and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it is a game that we all play because we enjoy it. We have fun playing it. We like discussing it. We like being a community. It's the whole reason why the podcast exists because we love talking about the game as much as we love playing it. So at the end of the day, as long as you're enjoying your game, you know, if, if you see tweets where people are saying that the kind of builds that you make for your unit suck, as long as you enjoy it, who cares what they say, right? So right. definitely shout out to uh, our boy Raudo Kuhn. I mean, you know, Theo and I, we live this point because we are the heroes enjoyers, right? <laughs> like if I if I, li- if I only played the game based on how everybody else on Twitter says you should play the game, I wouldn't spend so much time trying to do heroes no iron runs against the toughest content in the game, right? So, yep. <laughs> but again, it's exactly. fun for me, right? We have fun on the streams. Um Robel, shout out to Rosell, uh, constantly not dodging the uh, super attacks. <laughs> yeah, dude, I know you can see it in the chat, right? One of my members' emotes is literally yep. the uh, the Rosell emote because the number of times That's... she doesn't dodge against super attacks and then I die. But you know, I love that heroes team. I'm never going to stop. I can't wait till November. We mentioned it previously. The uh, mid November episode of the podcast is going to be a lot of fun because it's going to be heroes Crazy. time. Minato is going to have to put up with us either side of him, just <laughs> glazing heroes for an hour and a half. So it's going to be awesome. <laughs> so I think that about wraps it up for the episode today. Shout out to everybody mm-hmm. that came out to watch it live. Shout out to those of you who did uh, support with your questions and shout outs with the super chats. We appreciate you. Um, as always with the podcast, the uh, live version uh, is coming to an end and will be unlisted from the channel. You can still watch it if you have the original link. But if you did miss it live, if you came in late or anything like that, um, obviously the VOD version, the uploaded version where we'll, I'll try and edit out some of the like delays at the beginning and end and stuff like that, that will go up on the channel tomorrow, basically 24 hours after the show originally went live. And it will also go up on Spotify at the same time as well. So hey. shout out to anyone who is listening to the recorded version later on. Obviously, if you yeah. can try and make it out to a live episode, we have a lot of fun on these uh episodes it's been pretty great so far shout out to our boy minato out there working hard (laughs) not able to make it for this week but hopefully uh we should have a full crew on deck ready for next week and uh as we kind of discussed earlier depending on the timing of the schedule um by next week's episode we should not only probably know who the next release is on both versions we might actually have them in the game at that point as well so yeah. there'll obviously be a lot to go over on next week's episode you, as you well you will know if, if so. goku black is real or not <laughs> i know right is the goku black eza real like who knows right so uh we'll find out next week so that is going to be it from us on the slot one super podcast i have been the master ningen shout out to my boy theo aka dokon assets shout out to minato out there somewhere and uh shout out again to truth and Yatin for the takes shout out to all you guys that came out live or those of you who are listening to it on demand now uh we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did and that is going to be it for episode five we will see you next week for episode six so that is it from us here peace out and goodbye have a good one